Welcome to Mountain Cooking with Missy. Today, I'm making this delicious gingerbread. It's old timey gingerbread, just like Granny made. It's really good and very easy. So stay tuned. Hey guys, guess what? We're going to make some gingerbread and I got my little helper. She's going to help me. Y'all know what she's eating? This is the stack cake. The stack the cake. Day. And I made it, what, two days ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah, two days ago, maybe three days ago. I think I made it Monday. Tuesday. I don't remember. <laughs> but anyway, that's proof so the longer good. it sits, really, y'all, the better it gets. It's just about gone. That's about the last this piece. This is the last piece. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> My husband took some of it to work um, to some of his buddies. And yeah, this was a six, I did upload a video. So there is a video called Old Fashioned Stack Cake. This is Sister Vale's um, recipe that I made and Kenzie has been eating it for breakfast and Roger took some of it to his buddies, but she's having- So good, with yeah. milk and I don't even like milk. <laughs> yeah, Roger likes it with coffee, but I can smell it, but yeah, that's the stack cake. But today we're going to make some gingerbread and uh, this gingerbread <laughs> is actually made with self-rising flour. And this is a recipe that we've made probably for the last 30 years. A friend got it from a friend and uh, all I know it's a really old recipe when she got it from a friend uh, she told her that it had been passed down, um, you know, to them from like, I don't know. I really don't know the exact origin of this recipe, but I just know it's the recipe that we've always made. I made it in my church uh, years ago when I lived back in Southeast Kentucky. Uh, we had festivals and stuff all the time. So we did bake sales every year. We would make this, this gingerbread. Now this gingerbread makes like cookies like like cakes um and they're about that round they're a pretty good size and um this can easily be you can make sandwiches out of it you can put frosting in the middle i think that's what kenzie wants to do with some of it but it, it it's a good of it's a big batch and i don't remember exactly how many that it um that it um makes so we'll find out when I make it, but I do know it makes a good size, a uh, good size batch. So um, let me read off what's going to be in this. I will share the recipe. Recipes are always uploaded under photos in the photo albums and it's the album is titled recipes. So uh, if you see the video get uploaded, just give me a little bit, give me time to put the recipe up and I always try to share it when I have one. You're gonna use three cups of self-rising flour. Now, I always use Hudson cream. This is actually how I got introduced to Hudson cream flour. My friend uh, that shared this recipe with us, um, the lady shared it with her, told her to use self uh, Hudson cream. And Hudson cream is what I've always used through the years when it comes to bacon. Hudson Cream doesn't pay me. I'm not endorsed or what do you call it? Sponsored. I'm not sponsored. They're not sponsoring me or nothing like that. But I do like to share what I use and what I like. This is the lightest flour ever. This does call for self-rising flour. You, I get mine at Walmart and I live in Northern Kentucky. Uh, down home where I'm from, Southeast Kentucky, Food City has it. Uh, I do think they have a website. So if you want to order from them, you might can check out their website if you have a, if none of your stores sell it. But I'm telling you, when it comes to bacon, uh, Hudson Cream is the best. So it's three cups of self-rising flour, three tablespoons, heaping tablespoons of ginger, two teaspoons of cinnamon, heaping, and two teaspoons of bacon soda. We call it soda. My mom calls it soda, baking soda. But um, I don't know why that's in there since it's self-rising flour, but we've always used it. Turns out great. And a cup of oil, and I use canola oil. You can use any kind of oil you want, vegetable oil. 
a cup of buttermilk. Y'all, y'all know I love my buttermilk. When it comes to bacon, gotta have some buttermilk, y'all. Butter. Buttermilk just makes everything better, better. A cup of molasses. Now I've had a people when I made this the stack cake, I use this. This is black strap molasses, okay? If you have regular molasses, it doesn't make it, it don't make it won't make a difference, okay? Black strap is just more tar like and kind of little maybe a little more bitter. But this is just the kind that I happen to have. I found it at Royal King um, not too long ago and I got it. And so, but any molasses will do. Um, I've never substituted, use any, I've never used honey. I've never used K-Roll syrup. I don't know how it would turn out if you used any of that. I just know this is what we've always used, always used is molasses. Uh, and it calls for a cup. And it also calls for three cups of sugar but I am not using three cups of sugar. I'm using two cups, okay? Because I think that's a lot. But if you wanna use three cups, you can. If you wanna make this a little more diabetic friendly, you can use the equivalent of monk fruit sweetener. If you want to leave the sugar completely out, you can because molasses is a natural sweetener. You can leave the sugar out. We used to do that when we would make it for the sales, bake sales. We would make a batch that was no sugar added and we wouldn't put the sugar in we just put molasses in it uh, now there's a difference between sugar free and no sugar added okay because molasses is a type of sugar but if you don't add any sugar you can say it's no sugar added so that's just some variations that you can do and you're going to need five eggs you're actually going to use four whole eggs plus an egg yolk you want to save one of the whites and you're going to we're going to froth the white up and we're gonna brush the tops before we bake them with the egg white, okay? So, all right, so we'll be right back and we'll get started. All right, we're back. Now, I want to let y'all know we got the oven preheated to 375 and we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, we're gonna mix the dry ingredients first. So, it's three cups of flour to start out with. Now you may need some extra flour because um, you're gonna actually pinch this, it's gonna make a stiff like dough and you're gonna be pinching it off and into like one and a half inch balls and rolling them out and putting them on your baking sheet and then kind of patting them out and making like a cookie out of them. So you may need a little flour, extra flour to do that with. So it may call for a little more. I'm making a mess. It's all right. Three cups of flour to start out with. Okay. So we just mix the dry first. So she's going to put, this is three heaping tablespoons of ginger. Now it does matter what kind of spices ginger to me. Uh, I use McCormick ginger. Okay. Cause to me it's the strongest and it's the best. And ginger, if it's old, won't work. If, if you, don't have fresh ginger or if it's expired, it kind of loses its punch. And two heaping, um, tablespoons. It's supposed to be a teaspoon, but it's all right. Yeah, this is it's all right. Just don't do that heaping. It's a little more, okay. Two teaspoons of cinnamon. She did a little extra, but that's all right. And two teaspoons of bacon soda. So right there's the teaspoon. So you're gonna mix this dry first and just set it aside. So she's doing two teaspoons of the sodium. Okay. And we'll just set aside. Give it a stir. <laughs> Kids got her little whisk. Mm -hmm. She likes her whisk. This is my favorite thing ever. I love using whisk. I don't know how I ever cooked without a whisk. I mean, it's like my really... favorite kitchen tool. Yeah. All right. All right. That's mixed pretty good. You can smell it. Smells it smells good. good. All right. So now you're going to do the. Now you're going to make like a well, okay? So now you're going to put a well in there. So now you're going to put the, uh, so what you got to do now is um, you got to mix your 
eggs and your sugar together, which you just And you all always want to, whenever you do wet ingredients, um, when you have sugar, you want to put your sugar and your eggs together. And now you add your oil in. Now this does not have vanilla in it. Okay. And you just mix that really good. So for sake of keeping my video short, we'll, we'll come right, we'll let her mix that and then we'll um, come back. All right, she's got it all mixed. You can use a hand mixer if you want, uh, but- It'll be great. Right yeah. So you're gonna pour your eggs and sugar and oil in the well. It's kind of pretty. Yeah. The these are farm fresh eggs too. So That's then these eggs have been room temperature. Um, my husband works with a, a man that, um, has chickens. And so we get, um, eggs all the time. I love farm fresh eggs. Yes. So a cup of molasses, you're going to add that in there. Let me tell you a trick. Put your molasses in the cup where your oil was and it look how easy it just comes out. And now she's going to put a cup of buttermilk. If you can find whole buttermilk, use whole buttermilk. Try not to get the low fat. Uh, sometimes it's sometimes you just can't find it. If you can't, uh, that's all right. As long as it's buttermilk, that buttermilk gives it. I don't know. Buttermilk. I love just, the way buttermilk smells. Yes. Buttermilk just makes cakes and all your baking just good, and it's, it it doesn't. Yeah, moist dense. and yeah. So get you your little whiskey, Money your little whisk. So as you can see, it's all one bowl. It's not hard. I use her good little strong arm. I have carpal tunnel, so it's a little hard from years of using my hands. And you just want to stir it till it's all combined. And this will end up making a thick dough and it's going to be really dark because of that molasses y'all mm. yeah the molasses that that stack cake you see how dark it was now it had cloves and stuff in it um this this molasses makes it so dark but i like the i like the dark molasses so you're just going to mix it really well so for the sake of time i'll let her mix it and then i'll show y'all what it looks like all right y'all so as you can see it's really dark looks like chocolate mm. so you you do have to add more flour okay so you got to add enough flour to this to where it can make like a stiff enough dough where you, you can, can yeah get make a ball uh, make your um, make it into balls so she's going to add a couple of cups so the three cups of flour is just to start out with okay so she's gonna stir that in and you want it stiff. It's arm day. Yeah. <laughs> Let her use her arms. Yeah, it's arm day. So she's gonna stir that until it's stiff and <clears throat> when we come back, y'all can see it. All right, y'all. So now it's time to- The hard uh, part. Yeah. Put the dough out. So what we did, I want to show y'all. Can you let's show them? So we ended up adding four more cups of flour to this dough. Okay. So you start out with three cups. We added four more to make it. Look at this. Really stiff. Okay. <laughs> so what you do is you take part of that out and you put it onto a floured surface, and it's going to take a lot. Can so it'll be a little. You need more than that. And it's a little work. This this uh, gingerbread is a little work, but this the way this gingerbread is, you can cut it, you can roll it out a little bit and make cookies if you want. You can use cookie cutter, uh, Christmas cookies. You can do whatever you want with it. You can make gingerbread men. Um, we always made just cookies, like normal round, old fashioned cookies that I do right there. 
Okay. And because the old fashioned way, they just patted them out and baked them into like little cakes is basically what you're doing. So you're gonna take about half of that and put it right in the middle. <laughs> See, it's a thick dough. And I got my hands floured here. All right. <clears throat> okay, so that's good right there. All right, we gotta fix it where you all can see. Make sure you can see good. I'm afraid I'll turn my phone over because yeah. I've had some bloopers before. So, Kenzie hasn't done this before, so I'm gonna show her what to do. So, I'm using wax paper and it's hard. I taped it down. Yeah, I should have taped it down. We got tape over there somewhere. So, what you're gonna do, you're gonna flour. And another reason I like this flour because, you know, when you're making biscuits, you don't need biscuits, okay? And I make biscuits with this flour. It's self-rising. Um, and when you need biscuits, biscuits can get tough, okay? But now this is a little different. Um, gingerbread in itself is kind of a, they are, it is kind of like a tough bread. It ain't like tough, tough, but it's, um, it's going, it's like hearty. You know, it's a dense bread, okay? And all you're doing is you're just kneading this enough to get some flour in it to where you can pinch it off and make, and it's so soft. And that's why I like this flour. Now, if you don't have Hudson cream, use whatever flour you want. I do maybe suggest uh, to sift your flour, okay? I've never really tried another flour um, for this recipe. So I really can't say, uh, what other flour would or wouldn't, you know, how it would turn out, but at least maybe try to sift it ahead of time. So that's it. So now it's really smooth. So what you got to do now, Ken's, uh, I use baking sheets, so spray them really well. We got cookie sheets that we're just going to spray with some nonstick spray and make sure they're sprayed really well. And this is what you do. You just pinch off about a one and a half inch ball. See? And you're just gonna make, all right, bring the, I'm gonna show y'all what we do. That's it, see that? And you're gonna put them on your pan like that right there. And you just take your, your fingers and just flatten them down just ever so like that right there. And two, four, six, eight. This hold about eight. Now this is a little time consuming, but you know, when you bake sometimes for Christmas baking, it is, um, it just takes a little while, but this is how you do it. You wanna do one? Okay. And it feels very soft. It's you not, it looks soft. Yeah. So just pinch it? Yeah, just pinch it up. You want about a one and a half inch ball. That's good. So while she's doing that, I'm gonna whip up the egg white. So the egg white is gonna go on top, okay? And you can use a whisk. I'm just using my little frother thing because this little thing, it like does the trick. And you're gonna whip up your egg white and you're gonna put an egg white on top. Yeah, and these bake uh, at 375 until they're golden brown, which they're golden in color anyway, until they're done. You don't want to overbake them because they will get dry, okay? You don't want to overbake them. It actually only takes about eight minutes, 10 minutes maybe at the most for these to bake. Now, I'm using my little, if you don't have one of these little frothers to whip up your egg white, just use a whisk, but you want your egg white really foamy, okay? And I just whip it if you, because I have hand issues, I use all the help I can get in the kitchen. You can use a fork. Yeah, yeah, you can use a fork. 
but still, it's like yeah, that takes for my hand. Yeah. So as you see, that's very foamy. This egg white is very foamy. Uh, these these little things I have, this little thing right here, um, you can get them off Amazon. It's called a hand frother, and this one is like powerful. Powerful. Yeah. <laughs> we stir coffee and everything with it, but I'm telling you, it works. It works really good. So that's that, that's really good right there. I want to show y'all. Let me turn it off. So as you can see, that's very foamy. Okay. So she's getting the last one there. It only made six, not eight. Well, sometimes you might can fit eight on there. Look like other things. Yeah. So I'm gonna turn her, come back. See? They're like, and this these will spread out a little bit. So you don't want them too close together. You don't want them much bigger than that. So now, Ken's get the brush. I just had it. It's right here. She had it. So now you're just going to brush the tops with the egg, with the egg white. Now make sure you spread it out. What the egg white does, it just makes the top shiny. And enough, yeah, that's plenty. You don't take a lot. And it just see, cause you've got flour there and see my fingers got flour. Mm -hmm. You don't want the, you don't want them to look dry. Crusty. Yeah. So the egg white just makes them get a glossy uh, look about them. And that's what you want. So these are going to go in the oven at 375 for about eight to 10 minutes. Just keep an eye on them. You don't want them to over bake. And when they come out, we'll show y'all what they look like. This is what they look like pretty much a good size serving and these are more like cakes or a big cookie so look how good they look and mm. if y'all can smell yeah mm. the house smells so, smell good. so good and see by putting the egg white on them they're kind of sealed and they're shiny and they're not really dry so yum all right, y'all, we've been a bacon, so these cookies are delicious. So, so I wanna show y'all, I've counted up. She did make some cookies, show them the cookies. You can roll this out if you want and make cookies. She did make a few, she cut out some. So you can do that with this dough, or you can do what we've done here. Look, these are all like cakes or big cookies they're see so good look how soft they are and they're perfect they're not um too dry i don't like to over bake them they bake in about 10 minutes putting the egg um the whipped egg on top seals them up so show see you can see the if you break them up you look in there in the middle it's super like yeah it's tasty. dense Um, you can frost these you can get some cream cheese frosting put on them like that and make sandwiches if you wanted you could actually just put a frosting on them like a, any kind of oh, frosting well, you wanted a glaze or just leave them just like that mm. it's good we're going carolyn oh. so <laughs> We're going Christmas caroling tonight to some of the shut-in in in our church that don't get to come. And we are giving, that's what we made this for today. And we are going to be giving uh, this gingerbread out to some of the elderly in our church. And it's just like, we love to carol. We love to serve and we like to do. So that's what it's all about. You know, sharing what you have and sharing what you do and, you know, just, um, Baking just kind of puts, you put your love in it and all that. Yeah, I'll tell you. I love baking. But gingerbread is like, it's kind of a comfort food. And it's so good. It is really good. These are good, guys. I am, I will upload the recipe. Um, let me say that this is old-fashioned 
this old fashioned type cooking, like um, for this kind of bacon, molasses um, was often used because you didn't have a lot of sugar. Um, and if you've heard of sorghum you know, or molasses, it's all about the same. There's some differences. I'm not too educated when it uh, comes to what the difference between molasses and sorghum is, but I've had a few people ask me, but I do remember, you know, my family did not do it, but some people raised sugar cane and they made sorghum and they made molasses, but molasses was a substitute for sugar. So that's why it was used a lot, especially in the Appalachian mountains, especially down in the mountains, because, um, I do remember my mom and dad telling me, uh, you know, a lot of times when they were growing up, they didn't have a lot of sugar. Uh, so you used molasses or you used honey in place of sugar. But this, this is so good, guys. This is really good. I hope you try it. A lot of you all have been waiting for it. So this is really, this is how I've made it. I like them just like that. Look, it's like the perfect, perfect size. Uh, perfect for giving, wrap them up, a few of them up in some plastic wrap, make the perfect Christmas gift, or just, uh, just, just to go say hi and take it to people in your church, just to uh, share some love and, you know, spread a little Christmas cheer. So why not spread a little Christmas cheer with some gingerbread? So I hope y'all make this. Um, it's been a joy for uh, both of us to make it. Yeah, it's and, so much fun. Yeah, this is really the first time she's actually got. I've to... never made gingerbread, and so yeah. I made it with Mama a few times. Yeah, but I just kind of sat and watched. Yes, yeah, when she was I was littler, little. as they say, littler. littler, littler. So, but anyway, she did a great job. These are perfect. None of them broke. Um, they just and if you don't over bake them and they won't be dry and that buttermilk I think makes the difference when you're making these so they're not over dry um this is just this is what how I've been making it for 30 years and we used to sell these guys we used to make a lot of money for our church for these a lot of people would snatch this gingerbread right up so hope y'all make it if you do share let me know that uh, that take you've made it. Take tag a picture, us. yeah, on tag or whatever. I will be uploading the recipe, so just give me a little bit to do that. And uh, look under recipes is under photos and under the photo albums, and it's titled recipes. Okay. And um, I'm gonna finish eating. That's the best part, in my opinion, is the the edge, the crudges, the crust. Mm, real good. It's so good. All right, guys. Let me finish two of them. <laughs> Thank y'all for watching Mountain Cooking with Missy. There's nothing fancy. Just good eating. Just good eating. <laughs> Bye, guys.